Thank you, Aleska. Uh, for starters, I'd like to introduce the domain of the application that we're going to program. Uh, it's going to be something really simple, so we can complete the programming uh, within the 45 minutes that we have planned for it. Uh, and it's, it will be about gift cards. So gift cards can be uh, given by someone as, as a gift and then be used uh, to buy stuff in a store, um, which means that there are really just two uh, kind of things that happen to gift cards, to uh, events, so to say. So one is that they are being uh, issued. Issuing is the process where the the, uh, the company behind the gift card creates one, uh, and then they can be used to buy something. A process also called that's called redeem. So issue and redeem are the two key things. Uh, so we're going to buy uh, to create a simple application that can process those two things around gift cards, and then show an overview of the existing gift cards and their current uh, balance that they still have available. Uh, so it's going to be uh, having a nice uh, GUI as well. Uh, we're going to uh, start code that up as a monolith in Exxon Framework, and I will just run it locally uh, on the IDE. Uh, and then uh, once we have that working, we will split that into three microservices and then deploy that on a Kubernetes cluster running on the Google Cloud. Uh, and uh, we're going to scale out each of these individual microservices. That's that's the program. Um, so I'm sure you want to have access to this code as well. So I've created a public uh, Git repository for it. It's currently still empty, except for the Apache license and uh, the README and the Git ignore. Uh, so this is where I'll be committing all my code by the end of the webinar. Uh, so for starters, let's uh, clone this thing. Um, We are uh, now have a directory for my project, uh, and let's create a new project there. So I'm going to use Spring Initializer and Spring uh, Boot. Uh, I'm going to call this IO Exonic uh, Demo uh, Gift Card uh, Webinar. Uh, I'm going to use a mix of Kotlin and Java. I'm going to explain later why. Uh, and this is a demo project for Exxon, obviously. Um, so let's create it. Uh, as technologies, I'm going to use uh, H2 and GPA to have a relational database uh, present. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, Vaadin to create a front end very quickly uh, for it. Uh, we're planning to have Exxon Framework here available as a choice as well. We're actually having those discussions, but it's, uh, it's not there yet. Um, so we're going to store this into the directory I just checked out. Um, should be it. Yeah, I'm getting it. So it's setting up the project. So there we go. Uh, a couple of things I want to change here um, to really make this work in a mixed Kotlin and Java uh, fashion. I need to add the compiler plugin explicitly. This is very clearly uh, explained on the Kotlin side. So I'm just going to copy some code from there. Um, so that's going to be this set of code. Um, what we also need to do, of course, is add Exxon, since we didn't do that initially. Uh, let's get that done. Uh, also import the Maven changes. I'm going to use uh, Exxon version uh, 3, 2, 1. And Exxon has its own Spring Boot starter, which will do a lot of all the configuration. So I'm going to add that one here as well. Uh, it's in uh, Org Axon Framework. And artifact ID um, is Axon uh, Spring Boot Starter. 
and the version will be, of course, the Excel version. It's still doing some indexing, it seems, uh, but we should be fine. Uh, and let's also delete some of the tests. Don't really plan to do any unit testing here. Oh, I made a spelling error here, I see. That should be better. Uh, so now we should be uh, set up. Uh, so we're going to use uh, Exxon. So we're also going to use CQRS, uh, uh, DDD, uh, and event sourcing. So given that we're doing CQRS, we will have a separate command side, processing commands towards aggregates, and a read side, uh, producing an overview of existing aggregates. So we're just going to start with the command side now. I'm going to worry about the entire read side uh, and, and the GUI uh, later on. So I'm going to create a package command for that. And now with um, with CQRS, um, the, the key thing here is uh, which commands and events are present that can be sent to my aggregate. The actual aggregate implementation is a second thing. Uh, so we're going to start with those commands and events, and I'm going to put those in a Kotlin file. The reason is that in the CQRS style of programming, you're going to create a lot of very simple value object classes. And with Kotlin, we can program these very quickly in single lines of code like this. My um, uh, issue command will take uh, an ID string and it will take an amount, which is going to be an integer in my simple model. Uh, uh, and that's it. So now I will have constructors, getters, uh, final fields, two string equals an hash code. And the beautiful thing here is that I can have multiple of these in a single file. So in addition to the issue command, I want to have an issued event indicating that something has happened. I want to have a redeem command, we'll also have an ID and an amount, and I want to have a redeemed event. And with Kotlin, I can put all of that in a single file, which is a clear benefit if my application becomes more complex. Now with Exxon, I need to, uh, there's no, no real uh, requirement of what commands look like, but it is important that we can target those to the right aggregate. So we need to identify which part of the command identifies the aggregate. In this case, it's of course ID, uh, but uh, Exxon cannot know that by itself. So we're going to put a target aggregate identifier annotation on there. And we're also going to do that for issue. Uh, so now our, uh, our API is ready. So now let's uh, program the actual aggregate. I'm going to do that in Java because I know Java better than Kotlin. Uh, just call this gift card. Uh, we're going to uh, say to Exxon that this will be an aggregate. It will cause a lot of auto configuration to happen and automatic scanning for handlers. Uh, and this as a minimum, it needs to have an ID. So let's uh, uh, just get that there. So we'll have a string ID. So what I will need to do here is handle the commands and uh, events that can happen. Uh, so the issue uh, command, that's for creating a new gift card. So that will be a constructor. So I'm gonna create a gift card constructor with an issue command as an argument. Uh, and this thing will be a command handler. Um, now the, the redeem command, that's going to uh, target an existing aggregate um, so that it shouldn't be a constructor, but a regular method. Uh, I'm going to call that a command handler as well. Then there are two events. Uh, we'll process these in an event sourcing handler. Uh, so the first one will be for the issued events. And the second one will be for the redeemed event. Uh, so that's it. We have two event sourcing handlers, two command handlers. So what should they do? Well, the command handlers primarily should validate the commands. We should determine whether or not these can proceed. Now, the first thing that we can check for is that these amounts in these commands are actually uh, strictly positive. If they are zero or less, it doesn't make any sense to do an issue or redeem. So let's check for that uh, and just say that this is not allowed. And the same thing holds for both types of commands. Now, uh, for uh, redeem, there is another thing we need to check. We need to check that the amount uh, that the user is trying to redeem doesn't exceed, exceed the current balance on the card. So we need to do something like this. Uh, if command get amount is larger than 
say the balance, we should throw a new uh, legal argument exception uh, amount larger than balance. Now, of course, this is still incorrect because I don't have the balance. So let's add the balance to our state. And this is uh, an important pattern. So with uh, event sourcing and CQRS, you don't just add all state that you know about an object uh, to the aggregates. You only add particular state once, you, once it's clear that you need that for command uh, evaluation. Um, so in command handlers and CQRS, we cannot change any state uh, because that would not be recorded because with event sourcing, all our state changes uh, uh, are stored as events. So uh, if I'm happy with all the validation here, the last thing to do is to apply a new event. So I'm gonna apply a new issued event here based on the command ID and the command amount. Uh, that's actually a static method uh, from Axon. Uh, so this works now. Need to do the same thing uh, here. Uh, but then of course, not an issued event, but a redeemed event. Now in the event sourcing handlers, we kind of have the opposite. We cannot make any decisions, so we don't do any validation, but we need to change state according to the event we received. So in this case, in the issued event, we're going to set the ID to whatever was in the ID, in the event ID, and we need to set the balance to the amount for which the card has been issued. So this is new. When a redeem takes place, I need to adjust the balance uh, based on what was in the event. So now we've implemented issuing and redeeming. Uh, a technicality here, uh, when we do uh, event sourcing of an existing aggregate, uh, the, the sequence of events start by creating an empty aggregate and then applying these events through the event sourcing handlers, which can only be done if we also have an empty constructor and not just this constructor uh, taking an issue command. So I'm gonna create a private constructor like this, which wouldn't be present because I had this constructor. So this should be our entire command side, uh, which is fun and it should it, it can be deployed as a microservice in its own right. But right now to actually show you this in action, we're going to create a GUI for that, which is going to be a separate package now and a separate service later. So we're gonna have a GUI, we're gonna call this the gift card GUI. It's going to extend uh, Vaden's UI class, which means I will need to implement the init method. I'm gonna make this a spring UI, which is the spring Vaden integration essentially. Uh, now, uh, I'm gonna create small panels in my GUI that can be used to uh, issue those two type of commands. Uh, so let's first create a panel uh, for my uh, issuing uh, this. Um, so on my panel, I want to have a field uh, for the ID. This, um, and I'm going to create a similar field for uh, the amount. Uh, and then I'm gonna have a button um, to um, uh, submit like this. And now I'm gonna now I'm in a position to add some action to that button. And of course, it should be to create a command and then submit it to Exxon. So let's do that. So, uh, submit uh, dot add click listener event something like this. Uh, so here we're going to create an issue command, uh, and we need to get uh, the ID there, which will be uh, from the text field, and then the amount needs to be converted to an int, uh, obviously. Uh, something like this. Um, and now we need to send that to Exxon. So we're going to do that through a command gateway, uh, but we need to have that, of course. So let's make sure that we get that injected. Uh, I'm gonna use constructor injection here. Uh, we can actually make that final, of course. Uh, so now I have a command gateway, which means I can uh, send the command here and then we'll use synchronous processing here just for ease of use. And if this didn't throw an exception, what I can do here is provide a success notification. Uh, uh, something like this. So now we're gonna get, get a nice notification if everything worked out correctly. 
let's uh, put these things in a form. Uh, so we're going to create a form layout um, just for uh, graphical nicety. I'm going to set some margins there. I'm going to add the components. Uh, so the ID, the amount, and the submit. Uh, let's put this in the panel that we want to have. Uh, so the panel will be a new panel with caption uh, issue. Uh, and I'm going to add a form to that. Um, that's, uh, I said set content. Yeah, set content form. I'm going to return that panel. So now we've created this issue panel. The nice thing is, is that the redeem will be more or less the same. So we're just going to copy paste this, uh, violating probably many good programming practices, but for now it's fine. So the only change is that we're going to have a redeem command here. Uh, so we need to import that one. Uh, and then this will be the redeem panel. So to get this into our actual UI, what we need to do is create a layout. Uh, I'm going to use a horizontal layout for my uh, various commands. Uh, we're going to add some um, uh, the two things there, so the issue panel and the redeem panel. Uh, and then we're going to set the content of our UI to that uh, uh, command bar. Uh, we're going to set the size of this thing to full. Um, and now one, one more thing left to do before we fire this up is to add some error handling. Uh, default Vaden error handling is not that nice. Um, of course, we want to see those validation uh, illegal argument exceptions that we created once we see that in action. So let's uh, make that happen. So we're going to set an error handler, which will be like the default error handler in Vaden, except that we're going to override the error method. Uh, so we get a Vaden error event, which has a cause in there. So let's get it out uh, and then make sure that we uh, go down to the ultimate cause. So while this cause has another cause, uh, let's examine that one. Uh, once we have the ultimate cause, we can pop up a notification uh, showing the message. And this will be uh, uh, type error message, right? So now we can show error messages. Um, yeah, I think we should be totally fine. Let's uh, start this. Yeah, so it started. Uh, let's go to localhost 8080. So we have the two uh, command panels. I can issue a card, say test for 100. Works, uh, test for two for minus 100. Fails with validation. I could redeem against test for 30. Goes fine, goes fine, goes fine for three times. So now there should be 10 left on that test card and now i cannot redeem 30 anymore i should still be able to redeem 10 and that works so we have a basic working system here it's just that we lack a bit of insight here uh to the current state of all the gift cards because we don't have a query model yet so let's create that now uh, i'm gonna stop here i'm gonna create a separate uh, query package and now um, we're going to have an API there as well. So that's going to be a Kotlin file. So we need to decide what's going to be there um, in, this, uh, in this query model. Um, so I'm going to be a little bit opportunistic here. My data class used to exchange data with uh, the client is going to be the same thing that I'm going to use to actually store that data in my uh, read side database. So I'm going to make this a entity. 
um, and which means that I also need to be able to deal with null values here, and it's it's not an immutable class. So I'm going to have to need an ID, of course. So this will be my um, ID, like this. Uh, and I'm uh, I want to keep the initial balance. So let's uh, make it like this. Um, I want to keep the uh, remaining balance. So, very basic thing. So let's try to uh, somehow get this thing in a table uh, in uh, uh, in my Vaden UI. Let's see what's compiling here first. Ah, I need to give this a name. So call this a card summary. Should be fine. So we have a card summary data class with the data I want to keep. Um, now, with if you develop a read model in general, you're going to do that based on what your exact needs are uh, in the application using the read model. So let's have a look at that. Um, what we're going to create is what Vaden calls a data provider. We're going to have that bonus here as well. Uh, so we're going to have a data provider of um, uh, gift card summary or card summary uh, and void uh, data provider. Uh, we're going to initialize that. Uh, and of course, data provider will need to issue queries. Um, so we're going to have a query gateway injected here as well. Um, and let's delegate the creation of that data provider to a separate method just to, uh, to keep things clean. So this will be a data provider using the query gateway. Um, so I'm going to create a method here uh, uh, for data provider of cards, summary for data provider, query gateway, query gateway. Uh, and I'm going to return a new uh, abstract backend data provider. Um, so now you see the two methods that we'll need to implement. So there's fetch from background, from backend based on a query that Vaden uh, has determined, and this thing needs a limit and an offset. So I need to be able to do a query based on limit and offset. And the other thing that Vaden wants us to be able to deliver is to have the total size of the backend data store. So, which means that I know now know how to construct this API. I'm going to create a um, data query. That's my query object, and this will need to take an offset and a limit. And of course, you could make this more advanced with sorting and filtering, but that's uh, out of scope uh, of this demo. Uh, so these are the two things that I need to implement. So I need to get data and I need the size. So assuming that these queries work, I can now create the rest of the method here. So I'm going to, um, if I need to get a stream of card summaries, I'm going to take uh, the query gateway. I'm going to query that for a new uh, data query. No, data query which will take the offset and the uh, limits. Uh, and the other thing that I'll need to specify is what I expect as a result. So that will be the uh, response types. In this case, multiple instances of card summary dot class. Uh, I will, this will be an asynchronous response or so complete feature. So let me first join that. Then I have a list and the list will be converted to a stream. And now I have what Faden wants uh, something similar here. I'm going to create a query for a size query. Uh, I want to have the response type uh, a single instance of integer dot class, and then I'm going to join that. Uh, what are the problems there? Oh, I of course need to return that. So now I've implemented uh, a data provider uh, in uh, Vaden. So later on, I will be able to assign that to a grid and then get the actual data there. But let's now first implement the actual read model logic. So since now we only have the API, I uh, also need to have the actual logic processing to events and queries. I'm going to call that a projection. So this will be the summary projection, will be a component will be based on uh, JPA. So I'm going to have an entity manager there. 
uh, manager, entity manager, uh, public summary projection, entity manager, entity manager, uh, this entity manager is the injected entity manager. So these are our basics. I need to have an event handler for um, the issued events. I need to have an event handler uh, for the redeemed events. Uh, I want to have a query handler returning a uh, list of card, su of, uh, card summaries processing the uh, data query query. Uh, and I need a query handler uh, returning an integer handling the size query like this so what do we need to do here uh, so the issued event is really easy actually i just need to persist a new entity uh, so a new uh, card summary uh, using the event id the amount and the amount again because when issuing the uh, initial and remaining balance are the same uh, when redeeming, I need to find my entity. So I'm going to uh, get my summary, uh, asking the entity manager to find the card summary um, identified through the event ID. And I'm, I'm going to uh, set the remaining balance to the uh, current remaining balance uh, minus the amount in the event. So now I can process both types of events. Uh, Exxon has two types of uh, event handlers, um, uh, tracking and subscribing. So for uh, projections, you would usually uh, use a tracking event processor, which is something I have to configure in Exxon. There are multiple ways of doing it. Uh, I usually use this one. I'm gonna take the event handling configuration here. And I'm going to say to the configuration, register a tracking event processor for this package. Like this. So this will give us tracking event processors. Well, to implement the queries, um, so in this case, we need to produce the data. Uh, so I'm going to take the entity manager. I'm going to create a query uh, saying that I want to um, uh, see from card summary uh, C and let's uh, order this by CID uh, this will be a card summary typed query I'm gonna get a result list that should be it uh, and for counting I'm also going to use the entity manager I'm going to create a query saying that I want to have the count of uh, Actually, see, I have, I think, a syntax error here. Uh, let me just check whether I have it correct or not. Yeah, this should be better. Um, yeah, this is just uh, an IntelliJ issue, I think. Issue, I think, this should be fine. Um, so this query, uh, the count query uh, returns a long, that's just a JPA thing, which means that I should get a single result and then get it to the int value that we actually need. Um, so now we can handle the query. So this should be fine. I think we have everything here. Um, uh, let's get this into a grid in the GUI so we can actually see it uh, in action. Uh, so what we're going to do here is say we don't we not just have the command layout, but we're going to have a vertical layout. Um, this layout will also be have size full. I'm going to add the command bar, uh, but also a summary grid, which we don't have yet. Uh, and then we're going to set the contents to the entire layout. So now let's implement that summary grid. Uh, so that will be a grid of uh, card summary. 
uh, summary grids, um, uh, grids, card summary, uh, grids is new grids. Uh, there's not much that we need to do here. It's uh, essentially about setting the columns. So grids uh, add column based on card summary ID. And we're gonna call that the ID. We're gonna add a column for the um, initial balance. I'm going to add a column uh, for the card summary remaining balance. Uh, and of course, we need to add our data to this thing, otherwise nothing's going to happen. So set the data provider to our data provider. So this should be it. Uh, and one thing, it would be nice if this automatically refreshes whenever uh, uh, something has been processed. So let's add that to uh, the close listener of those uh, shows. That's the easiest way of doing it. Um, uh, like this. So now whenever we uh, the success messages disappear, it will automatically uh, force a refresh of this uh, table. There are more elegant ways of doing it, but this is the, uh, uh, the easiest one. Uh, so let's start this. Now we should have uh, uh, we should have the same application again, but now with the read model attached. Yeah, so it looks like it started again. Um, I'm thinking I'm missing one uh, size thing or something. Doesn't look very nice. Uh, I think we should have this one. Yeah, let's just start it just to see if it looks better with this. That's better. So let's issue a card, AAA for 100. Shows up in the read model, initial balance 100, remaining balance 100, and if I now do a redeem for 30, remaining balance in 70, 40, 10, and it fails. So now we have a functioning a read model in addition to having the command model. Uh, so now we've, we're done with the monolith for now. Um, and now let's try to split this up into microservices. So what you would do in real real life scenarios is have different uh, code bases for the different microservices. In this case, I'm going to use a shortcut. I'm going to use Spring Profiles to be able to um, uh, start parts of this application. So just start a command side or just start a query side. Um, and the technology I'm going to use to connect various microservices will be Exxon Hub, which will be uh, the easiest way of doing that with Exxon. Uh, so we're going to see the Exxon Hub uh, console in action later on, but for now the first thing to do would be to add the Exxon Hub dependency uh, to the uh, POM. Uh, so Exxon Hub version will be uh, 102. Uh, Exxon Hub is also integrated with Spring Boot, in fact, so I'm going to use a dependency here um, saying that IO uh, Exxonic uh, will use the Exxon Hub Spring Boot, all the configure uh, version, Exxon Hub version. So what this will do is it will set up uh, uh, versions of the buses that Exxon uses. So Exxon uses a command bus, an event bus, and a query bus to transmit those commands, event, and query messages. Uh, in my previous configuration, those, those were all local, so just running inside the JVM. And by including this dependency, I'm going to get Exxon Hub versions of those three buses, which will communicate with the centralized Exxon Hub instance, and therefore it will be a distributed microservices system. Uh, to make this work, there's one property that has to be added, which is the location of the Exxon Hub server itself. Uh, so uh, there will be Exxon Hub servers. And for now, I'm gonna set that to localhost just to remind me that something needs to be in there. 
Um, so that's excellent up. Now to add those profiles, uh, first going to add a profile here. I'm going to say that the gift card aggregate will only be active if I'm running in the command profile. Uh, similarly, I'm going to say that the summary projection will only be active if I'm running in the query profile. So this will be my query side. Now, I cannot do exactly the same thing with the GUI because in the GUI side, I want the entire web stack or the servlet stack to be disabled if I'm not on the GUI. So I'm going to do a little bit different uh, thing there. So what I'm going to do is say to Spring that in general, we're not a web application, even though we have the web application stuff on the class path. Uh, and I'm going to create a new property file called application uh, GUI.properties, which will only be active if the GUI profile has been activated. And this property file, I'm going to say, well, uh, in this case, we are actually a servlet based web application. So now I have three different profiles that I can activate. Uh, just um, by default, they will be all empty. Uh, and I'm going to set the name of my application, which will show up uh, in the console later on to something based on the actual activated profiles. Uh, which is functionally not necessary, but it will make it much easier to uh, to look at what's going on. Now, so I want to dis to de deploy this as three different microservices on Kubernetes. First thing I need to do to make that work is to dockerize this. So let's add a Docker file here. Um, uh, so what should be in there? You may some people remember that. What I personally like to do is go to the uh, Spring Boot Docker site, which has a nice Docker file for Spring Boot applications that you can just copy and paste. It's easy. Uh, and I'm going to include uh, the Docker plugin to, uh, to my Maven build. Uh, there are also other ways of doing it, but this is really easy. Um, so this will allow me to build a Docker image from Maven. It needs to have a Docker image prefix. So let's set that as a property. Uh, in this case, I'm going to uh, use uh, Google's container repository because I'm using Kubernetes in Google. Uh, I have a project predefined there called gift card uh, distributed. So I can upload images to there. Um, so this should be it really. So let's uh, try to see if we can build this thing. Let's first do a plain uh, uh, clean install before we create the actual Docker image. So it is a little bit slow, but it does all look good. Um, so now I can create the actual uh, Docker image. So the Docker image has been built now, uh, so I can now push that to uh, to Google, so we can later on uh, run that on Kubernetes. So I need to specify the name of this thing, of course, distributed slash GC webinar. 
yeah, and I'm pushing it. Um, so uh, looking at my uh, Kubernetes cluster, I have it running here. It's a three node cluster running in uh, Belgium in three different data centers. So it's, uh, it has high availability and potential. Uh, there is uh, currently uh, the Exxon infrastructure running. So I have Exxon uh, Hub running and Exxon DB. We'll see those shortly. Uh, but nothing of this application is running yet because I just programmed it. Uh, so there we are. We have two workloads. We have a cluster of ExxonDB of three pods, a cluster of Exxon Hub of three uh, three pods, and I can go to the Exxon Hub GUI. So that's the platform to easily distribute uh, Exxon applications. It will give me an overview of the infrastructure, showing that there is an Exxon Hub cluster now. It's connected to Exxon DB, but there are no applications yet making use of it. So let's deploy those applications, and then we should see those uh, popping up here in this screen. Um, so let's first run the command thing. So I'm going to ask Kubernetes to run a new workload or so new deployment. I'm going to call that GC commands. Uh, it's going to be based on the Docker image that I just uh, uploaded. So that's gift card distributed slash uh, uh, GC webinar. Um, so through the environment variables, I'm going to uh, tell this uh, that this needs to have the uh, command profile activated. So this will be a command uh, service. Uh, and I'm going to need to tell that where uh, exactly Exxon Hub will be uh, in this cluster. So which will be based on Kubernetes DNS. So the Exonic Exxon Hub servers will be defined by Exxon Hub default service cluster local. That's just how uh, Kubernetes DNS works. So this will now run uh, workload. So it has to create a deployment GC command. I'm going to do the exact same thing with uh, query. So we're going to call this GC query, uh, but then I'm going to activate the query profile. Uh, and I'm going to do the exact same thing with GUI. So we see the command thing popping up now in the uh, architecture overview. Uh, the query should come up soon as well. Of course, we want to test the GUI as well. Uh, to do that, we need to ask Kubernetes to create a load balancer. Uh, so we're going to um, uh, expose that service. Uh, so we're going to expose the deployment called uh, GC GUI. Uh, we want to see something on port 80, which is natively running on port 8080. Um, and, that should, uh, and that's a load balancer. That should be sufficient. So it will create a load balancer. This will allow us to uh, have a look at that GUI uh, later on. Uh, it would be interesting to scale this out a little bit. We have now one command instance and one query instance. Uh, in reality, we want to have more. So we can ask Kubernetes to, uh, to scale that out. Uh, so let's scale the deployment uh, GC command to uh, say five. And let's do the query model to a three. And what we should see now is that these instance counts are going up in the architecture overview and that they will also get connected to multiple Exxon Hub instances. So now we have two commands. Still three missing. So we have a second query now. So these will uh, these will appear. Uh, let's meanwhile try to see if we can access the GUI. Uh, so it should be here now under services because we created this load balancer. So it is, we have a load balancer for GC GUI. Yeah, and now we have the same application running on this microservices system with multiple commands and query handlers behind it. Uh, we can test the basic functionality again. So this works. Uh, I can issue or can redeem against that card for 30. Works 70 left. So we have the same basic functionality again. Uh, when we look into Exxon Hub, we now see that GUI. We see all the instances of query, all the instances of commands. We can actually have some more information there. We can click in it, and then we see that 
if we um, uh, this that this GC command application has two commands it can process issue and redeem doesn't have queries doesn't have tracking event processors if we go to the query application we see that it has uh, two queries it can process uh, and as well has a tracking event processor uh, I can a look at how commands are being distributed across my command handler instances so what we see here is that the seven commands i just demoed the issue and all the redeems uh, were targeted at the same command handler uh, and there are uh, there is some logic behind that it's uh, it's called uh, 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 consistent routing and ensures that commands targeting the same aggregate will end up in general on the same command handler which would allow that command handler to keep warm uh, caches uh, and just be more efficient. If we would do uh, send a series of commands uh, targeting um, uh, different aggregates, so I'm just going to create a set of aggregates here uh, with different IDs. What we would see is that these these get distributed across the multiple event, uh, command handlers, and if I uh, uh, do a large number of those, the distribution would more or less uh, be even. Um, so here we see now that multiple command handler instances have received those commands. So what we have now is a fully running microservices version of this uh, monolith that we created initially, uh, totally scalable, uh, running on several data centers, and all of that in just about uh, uh, 45 minutes. Uh, so this is where the live coding uh, ends. Um, um, I'm not sure how many questions we already have, but if you haven't been able to uh, to type in your question yet and you do have questions, then this would be a great moment uh, to do so. We'll be starting to answer questions uh, shortly. Uh, before I do so, um, one thing I wanted to bring into your uh, to your attention before we go into questions, which is our uh, upcoming conference. So we have a, a, micro, a microservices conference on Friday, September 21st. Uh, it will be in Amsterdam. So it's great in and by itself. We have some great speakers. Uh, Alad Framework, Alad Buys will be there, the uh, creator of Axon Framework. We're going to have uh, Russ Miles. Um, uh, so it is an interesting program, but you can even make it more interesting by uh, attending the Axon Framework training that will be there the two days before that uh, and maybe if it's a visit uh, from abroad to Amsterdam for you uh, you might of course consider staying the weekend and enjoy uh, all the nice things Amsterdam has to offer uh, so 